guns and do all of this and do all of that to go and fight them away. That's what nature does for itself. Just like whenever there's time for another animal to go extinct, a lot of times we think, based on these Westerners' minds, right, we think that if they saved a bald eagle, that's noble, right? But no, nature is the one who said that it was time for it to go. I mean, my master teacher explained a long time back, he said, look at the dinosaurs, right? Nature said it was time for them to go at a particular point in time, because if not, it'll be a heck of a lot different environment for you to be able to survive here right now. If you had a Tyrannosaurus Rex possibly able to come and, you know, eat you at any point in time, you know, out on the street, you understand? So nature is the one who, nature itself is what determines when it's time for another thing to go. And if you have the ability to chart nature, as our ancestors have always done, because they are in tune with nature, they'll know what is going to be done when, because they chart it, not because of, not because of some spooked out prophetical thought as to when it happens. This is more science. And remember, the word science comes from that Latin, which means to know. You understand? So that's why our mass teacher always explains to us that Wunua, for us, is our spiritual science. We don't operate off of spooks and beliefs. We operate off of actual facts, right knowledge, right wisdom, right understanding, sound right reasoning. So this is why he's gone through so many points to give us so much facts so we can put these points together to know who and what we are, not just what we've accepted over time. You understand? Did that suffice to answer your question? Uh, oh, wait, I'm forgetting I'm accustomed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure that out. You know, I'm getting used to the terms and everything. That's what okay. I'm trying to put everything in order. I understand that was correct what you said. Okay. okay. I'm just getting used to, you know, you have to get adjusted. Yeah, let's do you know, it. Adjust to get used to hey, we're here together. That's why we, yeah. I'm a student teacher of our master teacher. Right. We walking with our master, Pan Bab Yanun. We say, okay, that's the master of the heavens and the earth. I'm just staying, I have the, 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 the distinct honor to be able to stand before brothers and sisters to do my job, which is to teach what I have been taught and to share what we've been given. You know, so as a diligent student, that's, that's my job. That's what we're here to do. So, uh, now the ancestors, now the ships that come in. Now, what if you see the ships? What if you see more than seven ships? Like, what if they make themselves known to you? What if you see the ships? I mean, because... Isn't there more of us that can see the ships? Well, as a master explained, when you see certain things, certain things that you see just proves its existence to you. So therefore, just like he would tell us, he said, when you touch yourself, you've already confirmed that you exist. When you've made contact with a particular thing, then that's something that you know. You know that exists. You understand? So therefore, if, if you've been able to see something, you know it exists. That's, that's as, as simple as we can, uh, you know. And just for y'all that didn't hear the question, he asked, um, what if you actually see ships at, or, or if they manifest themselves for you to be able to actually witness them or experience them? And so the answer to that was just that our mass teacher has explained, once you've had these experiences, then that's, like he said, when we're going to find out if a thing is fact, we have three points that we touch. Sometimes you may not be able to have all three, but if you get two out of the three, which are experience, evidence, and reason. You having had the experience, right? You have the experience yourself personally, right? Nobody else is gonna be able to tell you that you didn't experience that, right? So it reasons out to you that it exists because you experienced it. You might not have the evidence for another brother or sister to be able to, you follow, be able to say, hey, I saw that. I took, you, did you take a picture of it when you saw it? Nah, I mean, so you might not have the evidence, right? But for you, you had the experience, so it reasons out that it's real. You follow? So when we're doing it, we ha have a litmus test, if you would. Experience, evidence, reason. This is how we find out everything is real. You follow? If you get two out of those, if you get at least two out of the three, that's how you'll be able to tell whether or not it's a fact. So we know I was um, saying that because um, well, that, that, that. Yeah, please come to the mic. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. 
death. I tell you know, the reason why I was asking that because um, I didn't want to get the I didn't want to get the ships mistaken for the wrong ones. Cause I from um, going over some of the actual facts, I know that the master teacher was stating that you know different you know ETs appear from different star constellations. Uh huh. Right. So I know when you see a, a particular ship, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily our ancestors. That's it could true. be somebody else. That's right. That's why I say seeing those different type of ships is sometimes it's hard to stomach because, like you said, you don't want to be um, abducted by one of those different species coming from another star constellation. Now check this out. The simplest answer that I can give to you for that would be that's why it's important for us to stay close to Panababi Anun. That's our guide, you understand? So being that as Nuwapians, we understand that this is our spiritual guide. We have a level of protection based on our adherence to what we're being taught. He's our master teacher, you understand? So then as he gives us, right, as he gives us more and more affirmation, which we translate and turn into information to be used for ourselves, right? The blessing that we receive or the protection that we receive comes from our adherence to our instruction as students. You follow? So that's, that's the way that we put ourselves in the, 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 the best place to make sure that we're not putting ourselves out there for any, it's the same way as, think about it like this, spiritually speaking, when we understand that religions are based around some foreigner who wants us to have a blind faith inside of something that they don't have uh, evidence or nor does it reason out for us as a people, right? Mm -hmm. We have a protection when we back ourselves out of blind faith. So we turn away from that which goes against us. So we do that spiritually by way of walking out of his religion so we can get back into our mind, nine mind, out of his mind, six mind, right? And then when we have that information and we've already borne witness to the fact of who our master is, right? When he tells us certain physical things that, that works in our favor as well, it's best for us to follow instruction. You follow? I understand. Okay. Well, um I can't say it. <laughs> oh, should I say follow guidance? That, that, follow guidance, that, that, yeah. that, yeah, follow guidance. Follow guidance. Uh, well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you use it in the right context. You know? um, okay, that's, that's a lot right there, but that's a tough pill to swallow, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what we can it's do real, is. It's real facts. But we can go ahead and make sure that. I, know I, I, I just have to get, reason why I'm, I'm saying this to you, because I know I, I've seen those ships, but I was just trying to figure out uh, which ship that was, and actually I had this brother, because um, he's like, um, he meditated a lot, so mm -hmm. I was showing him some meditation, and we had went on a high plane, uh -huh. you know, through the meditation form, so the ships appeared, and they manifest themselves to me, seven of them, and um, all seven ships came in real slowly. The other day. So after I was showing the brother how to meditate, when I saw the ships come, mm. I, I told him to come outside so he could see the ships itself. Mm. So, um, and they, they manifest themselves at about nine o'clock, you know, like the, the number, the sacred number nine. Uh -huh. So, you know, um, and that's why I was um, curious about that because I was wondering, was you know, the Cockasaur race creating some ships just to come in, you know, because I, I overheard that they was creating their own ships as well. Let me ask you a question before we, I'm going to, we're going to go into, um, we're going to go into Patarak, the mind's eye, before I change, okay. change class over to my good brother, Huntui Sanan Atum Reye. Um, before we do that, the master gave us certain things to look out for when you're, when you're talking about, uh, certain ships like he said if if a craft if you see a craft here on this plane and it's aerodynamic right he explained that if it was an aerodynamic ship it lets you know that that particular ship was actually created here and not created outside of this plane or this planet 
which is like your car needs to be aerodynamic. Planes need to be aerodynamic because of flying within this atmosphere. So if you see a craft and it seems to be aerodynamic in its shape, it was created here. You understand? You have multi-dimensional multi beings who can actually, their crafts don't look like what Hollywood has made crafts out to look like. But that's another, that's another issue here. And this is what we have to be mindful of if we go to Patharak, the mind's eye. Now mind you, what does Patharak mean? Patharak means the way. And it's the revelation of the Nuwapians. It's the way of Wunuwap. It's the way of the Nuwapians, right? So this is Wunuwap coming. You, you understand? Uh -huh. All right. Now, mm. evil are good beings who once lived in flesh. Let's go, let's go back on that a little bit because this connects to a question that a brother was asking earlier as well. Uh, when you're talking about the voices that are within you. Right? Because you said, I did notice that you said that you received something from, right, from yeah. source so or what have you, right? All right, now check it out. They can affect your thinking, your moods, your health, your actions, your dreams, your visions. This is starting at verse 80, by the way. All right, that's, you want to write that down. Uh, the mind's eye, starting at verse 80. It says, they can affect your thinking, your moods, your health, your actions, your dreams, your visions. Spirit or spirits within at work, evil or good beings who once lived in flesh. Many wish to use your flesh to please their own emotions laws. Now this is important. It can be deception or guidance. Yet they don't come from out of this dimension. They're here. Many trapped here by their lust of this world. So once they die, they're trapped here yet can't feel it's a form of hell to them. Now, what happens so many times with us as a people, we get caught up in the mysticism of things, right? To the point to where we, we lean more towards what seems to be most mystical a lot of times, right? right? What we need to understand is because we do that, that can be dangerous to us as well. Right. So that's why our master teacher has always taught us that we needed to build up what was known as a psychic self-defense. Right. And that's what right knowledge gives us a psychic self-defense. We can test these things out. Right. Now, let's skip down to verse. Ninety four says, so you can come under this effect, sleep or awake. You can lose self-control by persuasion or possession. It's all affecting your inner beings by forces other than yourself. Now, skipping over to 109, because we're talking about ancestors as well, right? It says, your good Nasabu or relatives and Salafu ancestors only wish to help you. That's the voice that says, don't go or don't do this or that. Stay away from him or her. Then physical desires take over your divine being, and then you submit to your pleasures. Or you are stronger willed and say, no, I pass, not me. That's our inner powers at work. Yet it all originates right here or within you. Some people look outside only or at other worlds. They read about or made up, taught by the very evil ones who teach all lies by their religions. Verse 118, there is no power greater than you, for all things move about you because you are the center of your universe. And because of your connection to the sun, if you no longer exist on the planet, all the planets will be pulled into the sun and cause a star holocaust due to the balancement you bring to the solar system. Now, let's jump to this real quick as well. Going to verse 151 so we can talk about the nature I was just speaking about. You see open people such as Nagaru or trusting people seem to love or prefer lies mythology, fiction, spookism, and mystery over reality and confirmations over truth, things that they can touch. They seem to love myths such as what the Bible and Quranic religions teach and many others, be they in books, cinemas, TV, or religion. The spookier, the better. The more supernatural, mysterious, mysticism, mystified, the more the Nagaru seems to attract to it over reality, things that reason out. 
Myths, as in mystical religions, have a way of fascinating the Garu. That's how they keep getting spellbound year after year, as the master deceiver comes up with more tricks and cinemas. Now, why do I say that? I say that because, and I'm not saying this directly to your situation, but I am saying it to us as a people as a whole. Many times we have people who teach these so-called mystic teachings, right? But if we actually get to ask them the question of can they give us the evidence to be able to prove the things that they're teaching us, many times they can't go in that direction and be able to scientifically explain to us exactly what's happening. For instance, when we're talking about voices that we hear within ourselves, our master teacher has explained that we hear the voices within us because they're connected to us directly by way of our genetics. He lets us know that when you start to explain how we're connected in a morphogenetic field, we're connected to beings who have crossed over from this physical body into their spiritual reality where they are now, and being that we're still connected to them going four generations back, they exist still within you. So therefore, just like you always heard the voice of them whenever you saw them on Thanksgiving back in the day, being that we're just coming off of Thanksgiving, right? You can still communicate with them right here and right now. You can still ask them to assist you with things, just like if they wanted, if you asked for some water before, your grandmother would bring you water in a physical sense. While you're dealing here, she still exists within you. If she left this plane or this realm, right, physically speaking, you can ask her to show you how to get to water as well. And because she still loves you, she'll be able to assist you in that matter. But what happens is we turn to spirit forces other than our own that we know exist. So when you touch yourself, you know you're real. And you know that your mother and your father is real and their mother and their father is real. But when we step outside of that, that's when we're going into religion. We are going into blind faith. And some of the biggest religions that they're utilizing now is this astrology, his lunar astrology. Everybody wants to grab crystals and say, you know, we're operating off of the power of crystals and things of that nature. And the reality is, being that they're not bringing the science to you, in it. Many of us are still being taken further under the spell because of ignorance. Remember, the 6,000 year spell was known as the spell of ignorance. Ignorance means what we don't know or you ignoring the truth. Our master teacher has manifested in this day and time giving us truth, the truth, right? So now you got people who pretend to be where he is, but they can't prove or do what he's done. So you got so many people who want to say, okay, we following the me too in the chair and all of this and all of that. But then when you ask them, where did you get your pronunciation of saying me too in the chair? And then we explain, you got that pronunciation from the Rosetta Stone, right? Which came from Europeans actually saying that they actually had the pronunciation for these words when our ancestors wrote them without ever putting the tone in it. Back to your original question about tones, right? Many people are still getting their information off of E.A. Wallace Budge, the European. Mm -hmm. So here they are, they're saying, we're speaking the words of the Metu Nichia, right? But they're not even in tune with the tones to understand that we would say that that's the Madatat Shalalpad Natharu, because they don't have the tones. And Panababia Nun is here manifested in this day as time as one of those beings giving those tones and he explains how. He gives further bill than they have because they don't. They got all of their information from a European, but yet they want to stand out and tell us we're crazy. But your information is still European based, just like if you were standing inside of his church or standing inside of his mosque or anything else. You're still accepting foreigners, foreign invasions, za'am, or opinions. So that's what happens with many of us. We still are thinking that we walk in an Egyptian path, but we're following the, the students of E.A. Wallace Budge rather than an actual African, and that's still a part of the spell. That's, that's what is being explained here in Pateract the Mind's Eye. So what I'm saying to you with that is we have to be careful and we have to use the psychic self-defense formula that our master teacher has given us by way of the experience, the evidence, and reason. And we study our Wundawap, which is that right knowledge, the right wisdom, in right overstanding on to sound right reasoning. And this is how we can protect ourselves because the truth of the matter is 
they still want to be able to use our souls, which they don't have. Like the brother mentioned earlier, every Sunday, every Sunday they're calling in 100,000 new spirits each time because they're calling on tones other than themselves. So they're literally giving these beings the ability to exist continually here. Mm -hmm. But they, um, well, those were uh, the good ancestors because they, uh, first of all, they told me that uh, Jesus never came, never exists. Well, you know, it's so, just I mean, important. I mean, it's just com I'm just giving like what I'm doing is I'm just confirming. Good to go. The affirmation that um, Pastor Bad Nine Young has put out is um, good to go. A hundred percent. Good to go. That's all. I ain't talking against my the master teacher. Everything he said is a hundred percent true. Good to go. We bet so we bear witness the psych I understand the psychic defense. I know which ones can talk to you because I have experience those, and I know the good ones from the bad ones. You know, and they, it's real. Very real. Yeah. All right. We just remember that when we when we have the class, we we got an online audience that needs to be reached as well. You follow, so we make sure that we we make sure we be as thorough as possible, so that everyone, you know, everyone can benefit from your question. You follow. All right. And with that being said, I'm going to pass this class over to our good brother, Hun Tui Sanan Atum Reye. That's good. Uh, the brother pointed out um, that when you see crafts, you know, you have to definitely be careful as to um, what you're seeing. The problem is a lot of times it's not what we see. It's more so how we define what we see. You follow? This is the, the, and that's what the um, Pateract, the mind's eye, was explaining, is that your definitions of how you define go back into your, your, your brain, which is a holographic computer, where you create the images that are stored in your brain, you relate what you see to what's already stored in your brain. You follow? So you have to be careful in defining what it is that you uh, see. I'll read from, this is from the mind's eye, this is verse number 198. It says, you must learn to reach the good without any interferences by any beings. And to know when you are protect, projecting images from your subconscious mind through your mind's eye and your imagination is at work because of their fictions, myths, and legends. Only Wunawak will put you on the right track. All existing beings exist in the same state if they relate to each other. Okay. The, the point is that um, we define a lot of the stuff that we have. We don't realize that at all times we are taking in information from the light, from the sound, you know, from how the uh, wind uh, touches your skin. You follow? All these things are, you're taking information and all this is being stored in the subconscious mind. And all these are create points of reference for when you see something new, you go back into what's stored to recall what it is, to define what it is. This is why most people think their mother's cooking is the best. <laughs> because when they first eat their mother's cooking, that defines what spaghetti is. Spaghetti is what my mom made. And so everything that they eat after that point is they comparing it to what their mother cooked. That's why most people think their mother's cooking is the best, because that reference beam is created from the first moment they ate that food. You follow? So you, when you see things, um, you have to be careful in how you define it or what it is, because, and especially when you're talking about ships, because there's various, we, we, we have a tendency to think that um, that they're just one type or two types of beings that come to this planet. When the, the life forms on this planet are vast, from grass, single cell organisms, bacteria, viruses, those are all life forms. Lions, tigers, fish, those are all life forms. So there's a vast number of life forms on this planet, and this planet is literally a grain of sand on the beach. So as many as vast life forms that exist here, there are many vast that exist outside of this planet. And many do come here. 
So as the brother is explaining, it, when you see a craft or what appears to be a craft, be mindful that without the guide to tell you that is a craft and those beings are for you, you follow? You, you have to be leery of that. You follow? Anyone have any other questions? This again something that um, new that the master teacher explained recently. Um, as we know, in the holy tablets, the master teacher explained um, triple darkness. Let me go to it real quick. All right, if we go to holy tablets, chapter one, tablet one, verse fifteen, the master teacher explains primary creation was performed by nine ether beings, simply Aetherians, whose science is Nuwapu. Nine ether represents birth, conception, as in nine and birth, and the sum total of numbers. There are no numbers after the nine. Nuwapu means to convey a message that results in sound right reasoning. So there must be a conveyor and a listener of the message. The message is life. To co the conveyor is existence. Three sets of three, or triple darkness. First set, before light, before energy, before matter. Second set, before time, before space, before place. Third set, before body, before soul, before spirit. And what all, the master teacher also explained is that when you're dealing with triple darkness or triple stage darkness, you all have, also have the stage of darkness that um, is the shadow out. You follow where the earth is in its own shadow. Then you have the blackness of space. And you also have the blackness of the black hole in which light can't even escape, you follow? But the master teacher recently explained you have triple lightness or triple light, where you have the light from the sun, you have the light from lightning, and you have the light from fire. This is to show how the master teacher is who he is and always brings us something new. Anyone have any other questions? Where does triple light come from? I mean, as it, it, it's simply put, it's triple light, you have the light from the sun. You follow? You have the light from lightning, right? And you have the light from fire. Those are your, that's your triple light. Can you get into the details of the bowls, three bowls, or those three bowls? No, those are bowls, bowls. the new bowls, okay. right? Well, you have, you have what is called, um, those three bowls represent space, time, and material. That's dealing with manifestation. Through space and time, material is created. You follow? Which is also the science of how suns come into existence. Through space, through time, the material, the sun, from that uh, primordial chaos manifests into a sun. And that sun begins the, the birth of life, solar systems, things of that nature. So those three new bowls, uh, that's a representation of the primordial waters, or triple stages. About the planet, it's 19 galaxies in the planet, right? Is it 19? How many? Let's say that again, yeah, repeat your galaxies. question. How many planets, about this planet right here, concerning the planet, is it 19 galaxies? There's 19 galaxies. This planet is in the solar system, okay. right? And our solar system is in what is called the 18th galaxy or the Milky Way galaxy. And there's the, what it, our planet or our solar system and our galaxy, as the Master just explained in the Holy Tablets, that it was once a part of a, a solar system that had 19 planets. And as those planets imploded, I'll read it from the Holy Tablets. Right. All right. 
It says your universe chapter contains, eight. we are, th this is chapter one, tablet eight. We're at verse 21. It says your universe contains 19 galaxies. There are 1 billion other galaxies. The distance in your universe reach up to 26 billion light years. Your universe is the smallest and innermost of seven universes, which are part of a galactical federation of 19 galaxies. As the universe increases, the universe gets larger and larger. Your mind cannot comprehend the circumference of the universe. It is unimaginable to you while in your body. The word that best describes it is infinity. The universe doesn't end. You are merely limited in your imagination. But as he also explained in there that our uh, galaxy was once a planet, a part of a solar system that had 19 other planets. Right? That's in, hold on, let me, let me pull it up for you. All right. The sun was a tremendous mass, a planet called Om. This solar system was one of 19 planets. This is Holy Tablets, chapter one, tablet six, verse 41. This solar system was one of the 19 planets that surrounded more massive sun called Sal. Sal was named after the original ruler, Sal or Sol, whose wife was named Arena. Their combined rulership gives you the name Sal Arena, Sal Arena shortened to Sal Solar, or simply solar. This massive sun, Sal, collapsed and exploded outward, and Ohm got caught in the gravitational pull of Sal, and it exploded and gave birth to your sun, Shemush. All 19 of the planets were hurled off into space and exploded to create 19 galaxies in space and beyond. Galaxies are recorded as population one, population two, population three, and population four, and on. Population one galaxies are based on their age and are from hundreds of thousands of years old to 25 billion years old. Population two is from 25 billion years old to 100 billion years old. Population three, from one trillion to 25 trillion. Population four is from 25 trillion to 100 trillion and on. So as it explains again, this, this, this planet is in a solar system, which is part of a galaxy that was once a part of a, another solar system that exploded and expanded to become the 19 galaxies. I know I heard a lot about um, Planet Riz. That thing, I think, and I'm assuming it's the eighth, right? eighth planet in 19 galaxy. 19 galaxy. Right. Is we part of Planet Riz? Is that one of the planets we came from? What well, What the master should explain is that actually, our planet, part of our planet, is a recreation was a recreation of parts of Planet Risk. So, the, part of our genetics do go back to, to being Riskians, you follow? Some of that's part of our genetics. Um, we here as beings are all trying to get back or should be trying to get back to being the Nathartal or being ones of the Nathartal, Munthar in Nuwapi, you follow? And again, that's going back to what we was talking about earlier, tying into that divine gene to develop and nurture that and that's with Unwap. As I explained before, remember that um, I said that everything we do, you're actually taking in information. And this is important because this affects your DNA, right? And as your DNA is constantly transforming and metamorphosizing based on the information that it goes into. You, you have to look at once, you, once your mother and father come together, the sperm goes into the egg right? Or the ovum. It creates one cell, right? And from that one cell, based on the environment that, as it multiplies and diversifies, the environment, the information that it gets, it transforms into other cells. You follow? From bone, skin, brain, you follow? All those, it transforms. 
but from that one genetic code. So based on certain information, based on certain environments, it'll actually transform your DNA. Again, this is the purpose of our doctrine, and this is why it's important for us to submerge ourselves in it, to transform our DNA, because we have so been caught up into this world that it has transformed our DNA adversely. You follow? It's, it's, it's just simple. That your DNA responds to the information, to the environment that it's in. That's how, that's how it does. It adapts. So if we don't submerge ourselves in Wunuwap, you see how detrimental it would be. Now, it, it also ties into the fact, because we are so mixed, you can develop that Caucasoid gene, which is really what this, this society does, you develop that as opposed to developing that divine gene in you. You watching their movies, listening to their voices, following the image of the beast, the beast man, the man in sackcloth as it refers to in the Bible. You follow? By submerging yourself in their culture, their lifestyle, their way of life, you would develop that gene as opposed to the gene of the Nathal. This is why it's important to submerge ourselves in Wunuwa. So when you speak about the Nadaru, is that the ancestors? Nadaru? Yes. We have, you have, also you have what is called in Nuwapu, or in Wunuwa, or Nuwapu, Nuwapik. You have your Salafu, right? Your Salafu or your ancestors, right? You, you also have your, uh, Nathalu, who are your overseers. Your, your ancestors go back from your bloodline all the way back to the beginnings of how we ca got here on the planet. And then their connection from here back to the stars, that genetic connection, that goes into your Nathalu. You follow? So your ancestry is your mother, your father, their mother and father, so on and so forth. What the master refers to you as the, the blood seed or the soul seed that goes all the way back. So the ancestor be the uh, Salafu, right? Salafu. Salafu. To a, yeah. All right. Hold it. All right. And with that, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out. Again, every week here, Pa Parar, question and answer class. It's open up to all. For those online, uh, send in your questions. We do our best to get them answered. And uh, we'd like to thank you all for coming out. Wadaw.